these are the only three knives you need in your kitchen. I have no idea why there are knife blocks out there. I don't even use many of the knives that would come with a knife block. I would just buy individual knives and start your own. Well, I have a collection. You don't have to have a collection of knives, but if you were, buy these three knives because they're gonna work for you and you don't wanna work for them. A chef's knife, it can go from seven inches to upwards of 10, even 11 inches. This is the knife you probably wanna invest in the most. I don't feel comfortable telling you exactly how much money you should spend. You can get a great chef's knife for as little as, I wanna say six, 50, $60 to some that are hundreds, if not thousands. I strongly suggest not ordering knives always and seeing if you can actually go and hold the knife. Get a feel for it, hold it. If it feels good in the hand, it's probably gonna feel good in your kitchen. General, it's your all-purpose knife. You're able to do all kind of tasks with it. So I'm gonna be using this one knife to break down the chicken into multiple parts. So first, I always find it easy to just start with the bone by using the very kind of tip of the knife. Do you see? Just very quickly, obviously it helps to have a sharp knife and just kind of bring it back. It should be very kind of effortless because if you're using a sharp knife, it's really doing a lot of the work for you. Going in there and using the tip to carve that wing out too. When I am slicing meat, I'll be using more of the blade in the center. And then I'm gonna use the tip of the knife to separate the breast from the breastbone. Okay, so even here you can just see the utility of this knife and how well it works to just break down this roast chicken. Okay, so I'm gonna make some garlic paste. I'm using mostly the, the center of the blade to crush the garlic clove so you can get the flesh out. And then what I'll do here is just kind of give it a rough chop just to kind of get it going. And I'm using kind of the lower end of the blade towards the heel. I'm gonna add salt, which will help break it down. And what I'll do is I'll just take usually two, three fingers so I could put pressure. And I'm using more of the upper end of the, the knife towards the tip and just crushing the garlic. And you see, when I'm running through any ingredient, like parsley, garlic, I'm having my hand on top of the spine. I find it easier to do this kind of rock in motion because of the size of the blade. You can do this with a cleaver too, but because of the height of a cleaver, it, I find it a little bit more difficult. Using a chef's knife to break down herbs is something that I do pretty much every single day, whether it's a really coarse chop uh, where I still kind of want a leafy texture or if I want a really fine chop where it almost resembles powder. Again, this is where I'm using, you'll see not so much the upper or center, but the lower half of the blade, almost towards the heel. Because you have your fingers on the spine. You can just go very, very fast with this movement compared to if you were slicing or dicing and kind of immediately you have this fine powder. So I'm just taking a standard medium-sized onion. It's the length, it's the type of blade. If you try doing this with a paring knife, it just would be too small. You shouldn't have to be sawing or like having to put a lot of effort. That knife should be able to just go straight down. You want smooth, even cuts. See, all my onions are the same size. When you want to be more exact, you want to use the very tip of the knife. The very tip of the blade is just allowing me to go make these kind of quick, deep insertions into the onion. We're using, again, the blade and just going straight down. And because the chef's knife has typically like a seven to 11 inch length, it's able to do a lot of the hard work and you get these beautiful, even pieces. From breaking down a chicken to chopping a parsley to a fine powder, a chef's knife really is the essential knife you need in your home kitchen. So with a paring knife, smaller obviously than a chef's knife or a bread knife. I love it, I don't think it gets enough love because it really is a knife for those kind of pesky tasks, coring tomatoes, hulling strawberries, peeling vegetables but you don't have a vegetable peeler. It is definitely something that I think is essential and something that I personally think you should never spend too much money on. I prefer the cheap ones like this. This one has a plastic handle and it always does the job. 
I'm gonna start with ginger. This is just like a knob of ginger. Uh, there's plenty of different ways and opinions, even among BA, of like how you should peel ginger. What I just do is I kind of trim the very end, and then I just kind of peel it with a paring knife. And it, because it's a small knife, it's easier to handle than let's say a bigger knife, and so it's able to kind of contour and move around easily. And you get a clean, nice piece of ginger, like that. Because I'm using something so small like limes or lemons, I don't need a big chef's knife here. What I'll do when I want to serve a dish with citrus wedges, I start at a 45 degree angle. I'll just go around that core and get these kind of beautiful shapes while avoiding the seeds. It's a smaller task and you don't need this big knife. This is almost like a food stylist trick. Just trimming the ends here and then just going straight down and just going all around that core. And I wouldn't ever throw this away. I would use this juice, I would use this juice, but you're avoiding that white pithy bit in all the suits. Again, this would be a lot harder to do with a chef's knife just because it's bigger and you could be more exact using a smaller paring knife. Okay, so the very last knife that I'm gonna talk about is a serrated knife, also known as a bread knife, but I feel like it doesn't give enough attention to what it actually can be used for. Yes, it's perfect for bread, but there's also other tasks that it can be used for. Bread knives are quite cheap like around $25, $30 max. It has a little bit more of a give than let's say a chef's knife uh, or a paring knife or a lot of other knives. The whole knife is long and straight. You are not using the tip. You are not using the heel of the knife. You're using the blade uh, and really just to kind of do these kind of downward motions to slicing something. You'll see these kind of teeth, these edges, that's what you want because that's what's gonna do the work for you. So I have this beautiful Pullman loaf, it has a very hard crust. I'm just gonna trim the very end of this. You'll see the remnants. And I'm, you see how I'm using really the whole blade to go back and forth, really like a saw. That's how you should look at it to get a perfect slice of bread. If you use the chef's knife on this, especially a dull one, it's not gonna get through the crust. If it does, then you're likely to have to put a lot of effort and pressure on the bread, and it's going to mush the bread rather than have it airy and in one piece. You really want the serrated knife where you have that kind of evenness of the blade and the teeth to do the work for you. You shouldn't have to be putting so much effort when cutting up a slice of bread. So I have a pineapple here. It's very, very tough. It's very, very dense. It's underripe, so it's particularly hard to cut, but it's fine because we have a, sh a bread knife here. I almost said something. And so I'm just gonna use that kind of sawing motion to trim the top. The teeth from the serrated really allows you to cut the top, which is a very tough area, and the bottom end, the stem end. And then I'm gonna go down the sides and you can see that the serrated knife can just go through very easily. And even with something that's like slippery and where it's like quite dense right now because it's underripe, you still can easily just slice it in whatever kind of pieces you like. It actually tastes great for slightly underripe. This is why a bread knife, it needs to get a new term. It goes beyond just the bread knife. It's obviously used for that, but so much more. Anything that's quite tough and dense, I would use a bread knife for it to break down. Again, you can go and buy so many different knives that, and overspend, but really it comes down to these three that are useful and they're the ones that you're gonna be using every single day consistently for everyday tasks, for little pesky tasks, or for one of those harder tasks. These are three that are go-to. No need to spend a lot of money. It's just finding the right one that feels right in your hands. Okay, Andy, go. Okay, so. I'm just I mean, did you have things to say? Always. Yeah. I always <laughs> <laughs>